be able to have a situation in which they experience something centered around Torah, have them walk out moved, changed. They heard it, probably didn't understand it, and they have not even been able to make out the specific details, but, and it's explicit in the Pesuki, you want to know what they will get from it? They're going to be able to live reality. They're going to be able to have some sort of fear of and awe, a trepidation. And ema, yira, retet, ze'a, those are the words of the Ha'amim when describing Hakir. It was an experience different than the one we're familiar with. But maybe something we should look to do. We have classes in the Mubeh Kodesh and in the We learn a lot. Uh, you know, we learn a lot, but what do we walk out from those experiences? Rarely with an experience. More often with notes. Sometimes with knowledge. <laughs> Hakeo can and should be for us that paradigm of being, a being able to be moved by an experience. By learning something, not even fully grasping it, but walking out different people because of it. Point one. Point two. Parashat Yisabim. Parashat Yisabim, the very onset of Parashat Yisabim. So here are the people, as usual, in Sefer Devarim, gathered around Moshe. And he's dictating and teaching and rebuking and doing all of his good Moshe end of life stuff. And so then, when he's in the middle of speaking about the severity of keeping the Mishnah, because that's but he does a lot over here. He says that, he says, you know something, there might be a person amongst you who won't follow these results, who won't be part of this baby, of this covenant that was set for. And you want to know what's going to happen to him? That's all. But if you pay particular attention, I don't think you realize this, this, this year, particular attention to the word of Moshe, it's interesting the way he says it. He says, Vehaya. It might happen. He'll hear me pronouncing all the tragedies that will befall him if he doesn't follow the Torah or her. But he will extend it to, or she will say to themselves, well, I can do this. I don't, that's not an issue. Okay, terrible tragedies will don't you think you're above the Torah? Not going to work out for you. But listen to the way Moshe says it. He says, It's a person who's going to hear what I'm saying, but walk away and think that they're above it. Fascinatingly, in my mind, Moshe draws attention to where we're hearing, to our auditory sense. Not about hearing.
and so not only here. So I once read an article on this matter, and it was a, a psychologist, and he suggested doing the following very simple activity. So when you talk to a person, as they talk to you, be quiet. It means as they're talking to you, we always want to put in our input. So you're in the middle of a conversation with a friend, with a parent, with a colleague, whatever it may be, you want to put in your input because they're saying something to you and you want to tell, oh yeah, I get it. I get it. Just let them finish the sentence. Be able to keep quiet throughout the duration of the other person's statement. That will train you in listening. It'll open up a relationship. It'll open up for you a capability of understanding the person better because of instead because instead of thinking about what you think about this, what you feel about this, you'll be hearing what they actually say. They give you the capability to truly listen. So I uh, not too long ago read a story about Viktor Frankl. Viktor Frankl was a Holocaust survivor. He was a well-known psychologist, and uh, I think the, the, the realm of his psychology is known as uh, logotherapy. There was a biography about uh, Viktor Frankl, and in this biography of Viktor Frankl, so it says that he often used to tell the following story. He said a woman called him at 3 o'clock in the morning. Imagine today what he's done by text. Right? She called him at 3 o'clock in the morning, and she says to him, I'm deciding, I'm pondering, I'm feeling like I want to commit suicide. And so he spends an hour on the phone with her, discussing the matter with her. And they hang up the phone, and he says, so okay, maybe you'll come to my office later on today, and we'll be able to discuss it further. I said, apparently Victor Frankl would com commonly, often, uh, often repeat the story. So then she showed up at his office at 9 o'clock in the morning. She walked through the door and sat down. She said, I changed my mind. I said, well, what was it? What was it that I said? What was it that took place? He said, it was the fact that for an hour you were able, she said, so for the fact that for an hour you were able to listen to me, that showed me there's something to my life that people might actually want to hear what I'm saying. People might actually care about it. Have so you cared and were able to understand me just by listening to me? So the beginning of Parashat Yisabi, this old arcane message of Moshe, listen to the Torah, if you don't, things won't be good. Embedded in there, carefully, subtly, Moshe throws in an extra message. And that is, make sure that as you go about studying Torah, as you go about listening to people, as you go about learning and experiencing life, you're not just hearing, but you're working to listen as well. Shabbat shalom.